In this episode, I wanna talk about the order of operations I go through when dealing with a pin or wrapped raft. And the big picture of what I'm trying to do is figure out which way it wants to go. Does it wanna go this way off the rock or does it wanna go this way off the rock? And kind of pick that direction and go with the most likely direction it's already headed. Then I wanna change the shape of the raft to accentuate that. So a lot of times there's a big pocket here catching water and there's another smaller pocket here. If I can make this pocket even smaller and there's less water coming in here, if I can change the shape of the raft here, this pocket of water will take it off. And I'll do a number of things in an order that goes from easier and a little less dangerous to a little more complex, maybe a little bit more dangerous and difficult to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just the strong arm pull, just push and pull, grab it with my arms, get on the rock up here, kind of move the line, grab the handles, I'll even pull out my flip line and clip it on somewhere. So this is just me attaching things to the boat, like my flip line. And I might just like pull really hard on this and have a few people pushing and pulling and moving things around and trying a lot of different things out to hopefully get the boat to move. And through that, it may just come off. And a lot of times it does, or you'll get more information about what's working and what's not working. Next time I'm gonna move weight around. You can move gear if it's a raft, although it's difficult to do. This usually means moving people. So people are in the boat, kind of moving them from one side to the other, up on one, one tube or somewhere else, just moving people around. High siding is a way of moving weight around. And so I'll try that a little bit. And if that doesn't work, I'll think about deflating the tubes. Now this is an art form. There's no exact way to do this. I'm gonna give you some guidelines for things that I do when I deflate tubes. First of all, I only deflate valves that are above the water. I don't deval, I don't, reach my hands down and deflate valves below the water. So I might deflate this one. I'm also thinking if I want the boat to come off this way, and this is a catcher's mitt right here, I would deflate this so this becomes sloppier and catches less water. Also, when the boat's sloppier, it's more likely to wiggle off the boat. So this is something to try, but realize once you've deflated a tube, you're probably not reinflating it. So you don't wanna really make a mistake here. Next, I might try an internal system. People teach this, this is something you wanna practice ahead of time. Maybe take the bow line or a rope and run it to a pulley down here and create like a two to one. Maybe do some internal three to one system that kind of brings the ends together. That again changes the, the shape of the boat and might make it come off. After that, I'm usually gonna accept a rope from shore. Somebody wants to throw me a rope and they're gonna help pull the boat off or do something with the rope to again change the shape. And so before I accept a rope from anybody uh, when I'm stuck, I'm gonna tie a two-point anchor because I know that that's, that simple line that I might clip onto a D-ring may simply become a mechanical advantage system. So I'm gonna go right to a two-point anchor here. And with my flip line, these fancy new flip lines that have sewn ends, I'm gonna go through two D-rings and then I'm gonna clip the sewn ends together. And I'm gonna take this little bit of webbing right here and make myself a two-point self-equalizing anchor. And as it moves around, it self-equalizes. It's pretty nifty, pretty easy to set up. Another good reason to carry a flip line with you so you're ready to go. Somebody's gonna throw me a bag, I'm gonna attach it, or maybe even a better rope, maybe a static line's even better, but some sort of rope, and they're gonna push and push, not really push, but pull on the boat. They might pull this way with the rope. They might put the rope down here. You wanna try a lot of different anchor points and a lot of different angles. You wanna see what works and what doesn't work. In my experience, if I'm wrapped like this, attaching to these top two D-rings like this works, and then going up at a 45 degree angle. I don't wanna pull along the length of the boat. Usually that just means pulling the boat down and it gets kinda of nasty. I wanna sort of let's, I'll let a little bit of air out of this tube, and then feel it sort of peel off. If people pull like this, it'll bring the top of the boat down, and this will catch less water, and usually will come off this side. So I would say try a lot of different angles, try a lot of different things, but generally this works really well, peeling the boat off. If this doesn't work, then people will start saying, let's do a mechanical advantage system. Let's get some firepower in there. And that for me would be the next step. Now there's a lot of mechanical advantage systems. There's two to one, three to one, five to one, nine to one, pig rig, a transport hitch, also the voodoo hitch. Uh, there's vector pull. There's a lot of techniques and they all have their pluses and minuses. I'm gonna say that I think we should just go standard with a three to one. And that's because most people have been trained on this. If somebody starts pulling out a voodoo hitch 
only one person knows how to do that. The vector pull, I don't think, it, in theory, it sounds like a good idea. I don't think practically it really works and not everybody understands it or is trained on it. So I'm gonna say that we should make it a standard that we go to a three to one. And once you've found that good anchoring point, you want with a three to one, at least two anchors. That way, if you blow a D-ring, you're still attached. So when using a three to one, do that. Maybe use a redirect on the far end for safety and throw a dampener like a PFD over it. So if everything fires back, it doesn't go back and hurt somebody as bad. So I would do something because when you pull with a three to one, you can break D-rings or break equipment and the, the system's loaded and can shock back to you. So again, I'm gonna go with the three to one. Most people are trained on it. They understand it. They have familiarization. There may be other techniques that work better in that situation, but if you're the only person who knows how to do that, things get a little messy out in the field. So uh, with mechanical advantage, usually, and, and the one thing about 3 to one is it has progress capture. You can put progress capture in, so you can pull a little bit, take a break, pull a little bit, take a break until it finally comes off. With a 3 to one I follow the rule of 12s, or with any mechanical advantage, I follow, follow the rule of 12s. You never want to go beyond 12 theoretical person power. So I don't usually pull with more than 12 people in a straight pull. If I'm doing a three to one, I'm not going to pull with more than four people. If I'm doing a two to one, I'm not going to pull with more than six people. Now, if I want a three to one and I want to add a fifth person, I just have to recognize things could break and I probably want to go to a three point anchor. Although I probably wouldn't do that because again, I try to follow the rule of 12s as much as I can. So those are my thoughts on the kind of the, the order of operations of, of handling any kind of wrap. Just really quickly, where to go through again, push and pull up and down, maybe put my flip line on, do the strong arm technique. Then I'm gonna maybe move weight around, maybe deflate tubes, maybe do some sort of internal system. At that point, I may accept the rope or the shore can help me move the boat around and change the shape of the raft. The rope from shore usually turns into mechanical advantage. And if you can't get up with mechanical advantage and some smart people, a lot of times it's just stuck and you have to wait for the water to drop or sometimes you do leave boats. That's, it's littering. It's not following our leave no trace principles, but sometimes it's just, it's too dangerous to remove it with all the tension in the rope and you're going to maybe leave it, wait for something to occur in the future. So. Those are my thoughts, those are my opinions. I am not a rescue instructor, so you probably shouldn't listen to me. This is just my opinion on this, this silly little YouTube channel. Um, if you have questions, you can ask me, I'll try to answer them. You should probably ask a real rescue instructor who's certified and knows what they're doing. This is just me sharing my knowledge based on my experience. Uh, please take a class, an appropriate whitewater safety class or whitewater rescue class to learn more. If you have questions, comments, I always throw them in the comment section. If you think it's really smart to carry a flip on your PFD and you want a really good one, I sell a few through our retail shop at River Hardware. I'll put a link down in the uh, comment section or in the description below to where you can get this fancy one or ones like it. And uh, yep, that's it for this episode. See you next time. Thanks.